Kindles. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck the Kindle. Fuck the whole idea of it. Books are important. I see people on the train, and I know what's going to happen, you guys. As much as I talk negatively or, or, or critically of Alex Jones, give me a week, and I'll be like, you know, I'll be out in front of the Federal Reserve Building with a sign saying, help Mark. All right? As much as I criticize this stuff, same with Facebook, same with Twitter, it's only a matter of time before I surrender and I, and, I, and I find it a necessity to get involved. The Kindle, I'm starting to see them on the train all the time. I'm starting to see them uh, on airplanes all the time. I like books, and it's not because I'm some sort of uh, Luddite or some sort of arcane uh, uh, person. Books are, have always been important to me. Yeah, how do you underline on a Kindle? Can you make notes in the margin? How do I spill shit on it and know what the stain meant and what I was reading at that time? How do I have an organic relationship with a text if it's not even a text? How do you save it? How do you look on your bookshelf and think you're smart with a Kindle? How does that happen? You, you can't hold up your Kindle titles and, and, and show people things you might have read, but at least you have this ornamentation that implies something about you. I am a buyer of big books. Let me explain something to you. And this is one thing I liked about Obama's speech today. Obama came out, uh, and I'll get to this in a minute, as an addictive personality. And I have a lot of respect for addictive personalities. I feel bad for people who have never been addicted to anything, because they're the real losers. They just don't know what it's like to really want something and get it again and again and again until they're sick and have to stop. <laughs> I am a guy looking for relief. I don't want to be happy. Uh, I, I would like peace of mind. I would like occasional uh, periods of happiness. But happiness to me doesn't look unlike retardation if it's pathological. Now, I know I've probably said that to you before, but let's get back to books. I love books. I am a buyer of big books with big titles. That's because I read books, you know, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, a pamphlet. All books to me are self-help books. I have to see myself in all books and glean some information that I can use in my life. I've also found that I treat books like I treat drugs. Let me explain. I've bought books in my life. I've bought books like, uh, that, that are huge titles and, and have hundreds and hundreds of pages because I believe at the moment I see them in the bookstore, this is a good example, A Thousand Plateaus by Deleuze and Guattari. What is it about? No fucking idea. <laughs> but man, you look at the index in that book, whoa! Everything is explained there. It has something to do with uh, schizophrenia, capitalism, rhizome theory, uh, uh, primitive cultures. I mean, this was a big postmodern text. And when I saw it in the bookstore, I was like, there is everything I need to know within these pages. And I bought that book, people, and I underlined the fuck out of that book. I mean, I underlined, I made notes in the margin, and I was reading it. And I tell you, I got hundreds of books like that. I have uh, Spinoza's Ethics. Same thing. I, I have to understand Spinoza now. I couldn't, grasp, I couldn't grasp it when I was in college, but perhaps now that I've done no active investigation into philosophy and I'm 20 years older, now I can get it. Okay, underline, spell, just underline, notes in the margin, genius. I'm going to put this in my head, all right? <laughs> then, oh, how about this book, Anatomy of Criticism by Northwood Fry? I have a question for you. Does anyone understand this book? Does anyone understand Walter Ben Hameen? Do, do, they, do they even know what the hell it is? I'm a smart person. I buy those books. I underline and underline and, blah, and I'm writing in the, in the... Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. I have hundreds of those books. And uh, let's not forget this one, Being in Nothingness. You know what? I studied that book in college. I went back and found the one I had in college and I underlined that one a lot. But one thing that I can tell you for sure in every one of these books that I have of this size, hundreds of them, all of them have bookmarks on page 15 to 24. All right, because that's where the underlining stopped, and that's where I said, I get it. I don't care if this guy spent 20 years writing this book. I'm at page 20, bink, bonk, boom, on the shelf. I understand. I understand what's in that book. Now I have it, and people go, did you read that? And go, yeah, a, a bit. You know, I understand it, you know, being in nothingness. Like, you know, what are we? Where are we? Does it matter? Uh, I, I, I feel empty. Am I real? You know, okay, what else do you need to know? But my point being is, First of all, the reason I look at books as drugs is because I don't retain much. I, you know, I activate what's already in my head with the stuff that's on the page. But the reason I like reading books like that is while I'm reading it, it feels like I'm thinking it. And that is a good buzz. And also, because I have the books, I can now revisit them and go, let me see if I can figure this out again and perhaps read a little more. Oh, look at what 20-year-old Mark wrote in the margins. This is so deep, I want to die. You know, like how, how, how can you replace those moments with a Kindle? 
Where are you going to get that with a Kindle?